Before we start, we want to recognize that we are here on the lands of the Ramatush Ohlone people. These unceded lands include the San Francisco Bay Area, the Monterey Bay, and the lower valley of Salinas. Estamos tan feliz que ustedes estén aquí con nosotros hoy día. Antes de empezar, queremos reconocer que estamos aquí, en las tierras que no han sido cedidas por las personas indígenas Ramatush Ohlone, en un área que incluye la Bahía de San Francisco y también la Bahía de Monterrey y el Valle de Salinas. Welcome y bienvenidos to Día de los Niños, Día de los Libros, Virtual Celebration. While we wish we could be here in Parque Niños Unidos with you, this year we'll bring the thrill of being outside and celebrating Book Joy into your home. No podemos estar juntos este año en el parque, pero queremos traerles la alegría de los libros a su casa. En inglés se llama Book Joy. What is Book Joy? It's the warm, fuzzy feeling you get from reading books. What was your last Book Joy experience? Dime cuando fue la última vez que un libro le tra trajo alegría. Día de los Niños, Día de los Libros Virtual Festival is brought to you by the letter N. N is for nature. Naturaleza. Nature is everywhere and it's good for us. So come on, let's go out and play. My name is Ranger Maria Jose, and I am a community programs and outreach ranger with the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Hello, everyone. My name is Fatima Colindres, and I am also a park ranger with the Golden Gate National Recreation Area and the community outreach team. We are so happy to be here with all of you today. Today, we are going to be reading one of our favorite books called Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal and published by Chronicle Books. Thank you to Chronicle Books for permission to read this book. I'm so excited, let's begin. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water is a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, mom says. Under the pond, is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three. They slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. <coughs> Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has a grass for her nest. Under the pond, a cattle's fly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low-hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Maria Jose, we don't have any moose here in our park, but we used to have tule elk. Yes, and you can still see tule elk if you visit our sister park, 
at Point Reyes National Seashore. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. But I said we don't have beavers here in our park, do we? I don't know about beavers, but I know for sure that we have river otters in the Marin Headlands at Rodeo Lagoon. Oh, they splash so fast. You hear the sound of the splashing and you turn your head, you can barely see them. <laughs> Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dapple leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still. A great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes. It catches a wiggly, quick sliver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. You know, Maria Jose, this uh, great blue heron reminds me of uh, our beautiful pond or lagoon over in the Marin Headlands. I've seen many blue, uh, great blue herons there. Yes, and also at Chrissy Field, at the wetlands there at Chrissy Field. In the, it almost looks like we're at Chrissy Field right now with our virtual backdrop. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Over the pond, we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Oh my gosh, Maria Jose, this this looks just like the otter that we saw last time we were in the Marin Headlands and also when we were at Land's End. You remember over at the Sutro Baths? Yes, they were swimming and splashing just like this photo in this book. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in the monster fast jaws. Chop. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Osprey circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and minks stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. I've seen raccoons at Chrissy Field doing exactly this, looking for yummy treats when the sun is setting. Because I've seen those crayfish at Mere Woods in the river. What about you, MJ? I see raccoons all the time in my neighborhood. Though I don't live near a lagoon or a pond. Usually they're over by my trash cans. <laughs> but I don't know about you, but I don't think I've ever seen a mink in our parks. Have you? No, I have not. But I definitely see raccoons every day since I'm right here at the Presidio. Over the pond, we head home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto the shore as a far-off loon calls goodnight. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. You can learn more about the animals that we saw in this book if you check out this book at your local library or you go to hoopla.com and download the ebook. And please come and enjoy your national parks. You might be able to see some of these animals if you go to the Marin Headlands and check out Rodeo Lagoon, or if you go to Chrissy Field, or even at Land's End or Mountain Lake. So these are just some places that look a little bit like the pictures in this book and where I've seen some of these animals. Thank you for reading Over and Under the Pond with us. Yes, I had so much fun. I hope you did too. And I hope that you'll come and visit your national park soon. And when you do, please wear your face coverings and social distance so we can all safely enjoy our national parks together. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See you in the parks. Recreate responsibly. Oh, yeah.
Día de los Niños, Día de los Libros, has been celebrated here in San Francisco since 1999. This is produced in collaboration with the San Francisco Public Library and many community-based organizations that form the San Francisco Early Literacy Network. Día de los Niños, Día de los Libros se ha celebrado aquí en San Francisco desde el año 1999. Se produce en colaboración con la Biblioteca Pública de San Francisco, con varias organizaciones comunitarias que forman the San Francisco Early Literacy Network. Bienvenidos a la fiesta, amigos. Welcome to our party, friends. I'm Lucky. And I'm Alicia, and we are the Lucky Band. Y hoy celebramos Día de los Niños, Día de los Libros, with you at the San Francisco Public Library. Book joy! Uy. It's oh, let's do it. Ya están listos, vámonos. Virtual celebration. Bailamos, bailamos, you know you wanna dance. Here comes Palatino Jose! Woo! On the hottest day of the year, he runs a corner, the kids all cheer. Yay! The Mexican ice cream man, settling his paletas to all he can. He's a paletero. He's a paletero. everyone. It was absolutely fabulous. This made this special time in our lives feel even more grand. We'll see you in person soon, but until then, stay safe. We love Thanks you. Thanks, you guys. Bye. 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 Adios. Hasta luego. Día de los Niños. 
is a day to honor children that is widely celebrated in Mexico and in Latin American countries. The celebration was started by author Pat Mora and Reforma, the National Association to Promote Library and Information Services to Latinos and the Spanish Speaking, in partnership with the American Library Association to make it a national event. At DIA, we join this beloved day for children and celebrate the importance of books and literacy. In San Francisco, on the last Sunday of the month of April, we celebrate Dia de los Niños and Dia de los Libros, and we are so excited to keep the fiesta going. La celebración la comenzó la autora Pat Mora, en colaboración con Reforma, la Asociación Nacional para Promover Servicios e Información de Bibliotecas a los Latinos y los Hablantes de Español. Y con la American Library Association lo hicieron un día al nivel nacional. Se celebra el Día de los Niños en México y en otros países latinoamericanos en honor a los niños. Y, en nuestro, y aquí en San Francisco celebramos Día de los Niños y Día de los Libros, celebrando la importancia de los niños y la importancia de la lectura. En San Francisco celebramos la fiesta en el último domingo del mes de abril. Hola amigos, mi nombre es Daniel. Mi nombre es Daniela. And, And we, we are, are counselors, counselors at Tree Frog Treks. Throughout these difficult times, there's nothing better to do than celebrate the positive. Y por eso estamos hoy con ustedes para decirles un fenomenal día de los niños 2021. Best wishes from our family and all our animal friends here at Tree Frog Treks to, to your family, family and friends, friends at home. home. Just remember, be safe, be respectful, and be positive. Have a great día de los niños. Bye. Bye. Shima and I'm a librarian at the San Francisco Public Library and today I'm going to share some songs and a book with you. Hola a todos, yo me llamo Shima, soy una bibliotecaria aquí en la ciudad de San Francisco. Hoy quiero compartir una canción y un libro con ustedes. Hay que empezar con la araña pequeñita, Let's Sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider. We're going to do it in Spanish. Even if you don't know the words in Spanish, I'm sure you know the movement, so you can follow along. Okay, ready? Let's get our spiders. If you can't do it like this, si no lo puedes hacer así, lo puedes hacer así, okay? Listos, vamos a cantar en español. Uno, dos, tres. La araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. Vino la lluvia y se la llevó. Salió el sol y todo lo secó. Y la araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. Great job, everyone. Nice work. Hay que hacerlo en inglés. Let's do it in English this time. And I'll do my hands like this for the spider. Ready? Listos? En inglés. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Great job. Buen trabajo todos. Okay, the book I want to share with you today is Green Green, a community gardening story by Marie Lamba and Valdez Lamba, illustrated by Sonia Sanchez. And it's published by Farrar Strauss Giro, and we're reading it today with permission from Macmillan Publishers. Thank you so much, Macmillan Publishers.
Here's what looks like a garden growing in a bathtub. Un jardín en baño. Green, green, fresh and clean. Brown, brown, dig the ground. It looks like that grandmother is looking over the fence to see the kids gardening. Parece que esa abuelita está mirando a los niños jugando en el jardín, trabajando en el jardín. It's very peaceful. Rake, scrape, seeds in rows, tamp in water. The garden grows. Y esta mamá y este niño están jugando. Ella le está tratando de mojar con la manguera, pero él tiene una paraguas. The little boy is protecting himself with an umbrella while they're raking in the garden. Brown, brown. Dig the ground. Look at all these construction tracks. They're coming and they're digging up what used to be the garden. The kids look sad. Aquí vienen algunos troques de construcción y mira qué tan triste se parecen los niños porque parece que se está llevando, los troques se están llevando su jardín, ¿verdad? Dozers lift, concrete flows, stone and metal. The city grows. Están haciendo mucha construcción en la ciudad y la ciudad está creciendo. And grows. Wow. Mira los apartamentos tan grandes que están. All those apartment buildings seem really high up. Kind of looks like parts of San Francisco, right? Parece tantito como algunas partes de San Francisco. Green, green, in between. Aquí están creciendo algunas plantitas. La gente en los apartamentos tienen plantas para tener un tantito de verde. So people are growing plants on their fire escapes. And it looks like what used to be the garden. I see some trees, but it looks like there's some other stuff too, right? Some junk. Squirrel gray, pigeon blue, weeds and wildflowers, litter too. Hay basura, pero también hay animales y algunas flores. Y la gente está caminando usando su paraguas, pero veo a Dos personas que se están fijando de lo que está pasando adentro de lo que antes era su jardín. Brown, brown. Dig the ground. Mira, la niña tiene una idea. Dice, deberíamos empezar el jardín de nuevo. She said, what if we dig the ground and we can start the garden all over again? Brown, brown, dig the ground. So it looks like it's kind of hard work. Everybody is straining. Parece que sí es trabajo duro, ¿verdad? Pero todos están trabajando juntos. Uh-oh. Except for that guy up here, taking a nap in the trash. Lift and clear, shovel rows, working together. Our garden grows. Mira, que hermoso se ve el jardín. Look how beautiful the garden looks. I already see some flowers and everybody's working together. And that's beautiful too. And grows. Está creciendo más y más. Las flores están tan bellas. 
and the kids are playing in the garden with the tire swing. I think the tire was there before, before it was trash, but they turned it into a toy. And grows. Creció más el jardín. Mira. Qué tantas flores que hay en el jardín. Y espacio para tener un picnic. Y también una casita de árbol. So there's room for a picnic now. And a tree house for the kids in the neighborhood to play in. Green, green, keep it clean. Todos tenemos que trabajar juntos para mantener el jardín. Everybody's got to work together. The end. How can we make our world more green, green? A city is an exciting place to live, but there are a lot of buildings and pavement covering the ground. Where can you dig and make things grow? At a community garden. Did you know San Francisco has its own community gardens? To find out more about San Francisco's community gardens, go to sfrecpark.org and search for community gardens. Before I go, I want to share one more rhyme with you. Antes de que me voy, quiero compartir una rima más con ustedes. Es de la colmena. It's about a beehive. Aquí está la colmena. Here's the beehive. Pero ¿dónde están las abejas? But where's the bees? Escondidos adentro. Donde nadie los ve. Hidden inside where no one can see. <gasps> Aquí vienen. Here they come. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Follow the Librotero for music, stories, and special visits to places in our beautiful city where we can connect with nature. Siga el Librotero para cuentos, música, y paseos especiales dentro de nuestra bella ciudad. Es nuestro placer traerles Día de los Niños, Día de los Libros, San Francisco 2021. garden is at the far west end of the botanical garden and San Francisco families can get in for free. Let's go in and see what's going on. Join us for Bean Sprouts Family Days. Reserve a bucket in advance full of cool supplies to explore the garden. Take a closer look. Popular with kids of all ages, the stump jump is a physical challenge and a mental challenge. Kids, can you jump from stump to stump without touching the ground and spell a word at the same time? the colorful nature yoga signs in the garden. Kids, can you match your body to the shape in the picture?
welcome, welcome to my very special, inspiring, magical and loving nature corner in my home. My name is Yakuta Punawala and I am so excited to show you how I've created this space and how you can create your own nature corner in your home. The story of this corner began 10 years ago when I bought my first baby plants. They came in tiny little pots like these and grew from tiny little seeds like these ones. And look how big and tall they've become. Meet Ally and Piggy and Bambi and Shotty and Tiny and Smalley. I spend most of my time working and playing outside in the Golden Gate National Parks. But when the pandemic began and we couldn't go outside very easily, I miss playing outside so much that I decided to bring the joys of nature inside my home. I added feathers and pine cones that I found on my hikes and all the animal friends that I have at home. Some big ones like Nemo the Clownfish. Remember the film Finding Nemo where Dory teaches us to just keep swimming? And some other animal friends too like this Mr. Moose and these alebrijes that I found in Oaxaca in Mexico. Remember the film Coco where all the alebrijes are fantastical creatures and have all these cool superpowers? Miss Owl right here, she reminds me of the owl in my neighborhood who does mm -hmm and wakes me up every morning. And Miss Pretty Peacock, she makes me feel closer to my home in India where all these peacocks would go dancing and prancing around on the streets. Oh, my nature corner is so full of life. Sometimes I come here to read my favorite books like Dino Duckling. And then sometimes I come here to learn more about nature from books like the Curious Nature Guidebook. And when I miss my family and friends, I pull out this big treasure box full of cards and letters and photos that remind me of my friends and family who love me and care for me so deeply. But my nature corner would be incomplete without a photo of my family. So I added this one right here and this beautiful tablecloth that my mother made for me. And when I'm in need of a hug, I look at this girl hugging a bear and I give myself a big bear hug or a small butterfly hug. So let's all give ourselves a hug again. A big bear hug and a small butterfly hug where you join your thumbs, twist them like this and give yourself a butterfly hug. So now it's your turn to create your nature corner. Here are some ideas. You can keep a little plant or you can grow a plant from seeds. And you can decorate your corner with arts and crafts that you've made or received little pins from friends in the library and the parks. Or you can keep your favorite book and come here and read. You can sing songs and listen to music. You can come here when you're happy. You can come here when you're sad. You can say good morning nature corner when you wake up and good night nature corner when it's time to go to bed. So friends, I hope you create your own nature corner. I can't wait to see it. Good luck. Explorers, my name is Ranger Sochi, and I am a park ranger at Fort Point National Historic Site, and I'm excited to be part of Dia de los Niños. Today, I wanted to go ahead and bring a little of what I love to do in my free time and mix it with what I get to do every day at work. One of my passions in life is to read and write, especially when it comes to poetry. 
Poems are always fun to write because it is about telling a story, but in as few words as possible, making it an entertaining little challenge. Poetry also has so many forms that it lets us be super creative. And now more than ever, we have access to reading and writing more poetry, especially when we have such modern inspirational figures, such as Amanda Gorman being the first ever youth poet laureate to read a poem during a presidential inauguration. As we look to create history by showing off our abilities to be creative, I wanted to give you an idea for one style of poetry that you can use to help you develop your skills as poets. This form is known as an I am poem with a little bit of a twist. Using things from where I work, I want to encourage you to look at these ordinary objects and try to see yourselves in them. Now you must be thinking, what do I have in common with some old brick from Four Point? Well, here's an example. When I look at this brick, I think of how it used to be part of the walls that were packed together tightly to make soldiers that lived there feel protected from those harsh winds. But this brick also reminds me of how with the help of my family trying to protect and support me when I was little, it's what let me work really hard and be where I am today. Within that little packet you have, there will be some instructions and a list of words and objects with pictures to help give you some inspiration about an object that you can use for this activity. Once you have a word picked out, look at the last page where you can start to write your own poem. You can also look around your personal space and use any objects near you in case you have a hard time picking a word. There are two examples to help give you an idea of what it can look like. One of them is one I wrote, which I'll read for you today. You're more than welcome to read along with me too. When you are done, feel free to share it with us if you ever get the chance to come visit us at Four Point. I am a brick. I am the brick in the walls of Fort Point. I often wonder if I stand out from the others. I hear the call of birds flying above. I see waves crashing beneath me. I want to be pretty. I am the brick in the walls of Fort Point. I pretend my pillow fort is a castle. I feel warm sitting in the sun. I touch the air that I breathe. I worry someone will make me crumble. I cry when I think of my grandma. I am the brick in the walls of Fort Point. I understand my family keeps me strong. I say to let go of anger. I dream that we can be happy. I try to do one good thing a day. I hope to make a mark in the world. I am the brick in the walls of Fort Point. I am a wave. I am the waves crashing by the fort. I often wonder if I push too hard, I will knock it down. I hear loud music and can't hear myself think. I see a closed door and an open window. I want to have a lot of money to buy a PS5. I am the waves crashing by the fort. I pretend that I can fly. I feel wet from all the water. I touch all the boats and the Golden Gate Bridge. I worry if I push too hard, I will push all the boats away. I cry when I'm all alone. I am the waves crashing by the fort. I understand I can't control everything. I say to keep moving forward. I dream to buy my dad a big house. I try to always smile. I hope to see my friends again. I am the waves crashing by the fort. Hola, 
Me llamo Rebecca. Hello, my name is Rebecca, and welcome children and families to the Presidio of San Francisco. We are so excited to be celebrating Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros this year. Today, I'm going to share some of my favorite places with you. Let's go discover. Vamos a conocer. First stop, Mountain Lake and Mountain Lake Playground. Bienvenidos al lago y el parque juvenil de Mountain Lake. Mountain Lake is important to the Presidio's landscape and wildlife. San Francisco's first people, the Yalamu Ramaytush Ohlone, had a close relationship with the lake. When the Spanish arrived to the Presidio, they camped along the lake shores. When you visit, look carefully to see plants, turtles, birds, and other wildlife, and learn more from the signs with beautiful pictures and translations in Spanish and Chinese. Nearby, there's a wonderful playground for kids big and small, where you can climb, swing, slide, and make friends. There's also a nearby trail where you can read pages from a story walk. The one at Mountain Lake is called I Wrote You a Note by Lizzie Boyd. Another great spot to visit in the park is El Polín Spring. Aquí estamos en el Manatial del Polín. Like Mountain Lake, this spring has always been a source of fresh water in this area, once for Yalamu Ohlone families, then for the Spanish settlers, as well as for the Me Mexican settlers who came after. One of my favorite stories of the Presidio is about Juana Briones. Juana moved to El Polín in the year 1813 when she was 11 years old. She learned about traditional healing from indigenous people in her community and used these skills to heal people from all over. Juana era una curandera famosa de San Francisco. El Polín Spring has always provided water and habitat for birds, butterflies, and other wildlife. You can follow the trickle of the spring water as it flows down the cobblestone path. El Manatial da vida a los animales y plantas esta zona. Are you getting hungry for lunch? Use the picnic tables nearby for a snack in nature and learn more about El Polín Spring through the bilingual signage. Our final stop today is Chrissy Field. Chrissy Field es una playa perfecta. And this fall, Presidio Tunnel Tops will open near Chrissy Field. Wow, we've seen so many neat places in the Presidio today for kids and families, and there's so much more. Come and visit us, have a picnic in the main parade ground, hike on the Ecology Trail, or go visit the Walt Disney Family Museum. Feliz Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros. Los esperemos pronto. Adiós. Hi, my name is Fiona Solomon, and I'm going to teach you two techniques on playing the steel pan. The steel pan is a musical instrument that originated from the British Caribbean and the English-speaking countries of the West Indies. It is one of the newest instruments invented, only just invented in the 21st century. And what's really cool about it is that the instrument was actually invented by small children. That's one of the reasons that playing the steel pan is so easy. So I'm going to show you two simple techniques for playing any song on the steel pan. The first technique you'll see is hitting. You can play almost any song by striking each note with these. These are the mallets. The second technique I'm going to show you is rolling. Now that's when you strike each note multiple times so you create an elongated sound. These are the only two techniques needed to learn how to play the steel pan. And once you know them, you can practically play anything. So in the remainder of the video, I'm going to show you how you hit and how you roll.
Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'm Fiona Solomon and I'm so glad to be a part of the Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros virtual celebration. I want to thank the San Francisco Public Library for inviting me to share this brief tutorial on how to play steel pan with you. My name is Catherine. I'm an environmental educator here at the Eco Center in Heron's Head Park, located in the beautiful and sunny Bayview neighborhood. Um, today we're going to do an activity for Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros event. Uh, but before we do our activity, we're going to talk a little bit more about Heron's Head Park. The Eco Center is located here in Heron's Head Park. Heron's Head Park is home to many California native plants and animals. That means that these plants and animals have been living in California for many, many years. Some examples are the hundreds of different birds that are located in Heron's Head Park, some of which include the white crowned sparrow, the snowy egret, and of course, our namesake, the great blue heron. For our leaf rubbing activity, we're going to need three things. We're going to need a piece of paper, a crayon, and a leaf or coin. Para nuestro frotaje de hoja, vamos a necesitar tres cosas. Un pedazo de papel, un crayon, y una hoja o moneda. First, I'm going to do the instructions in English. And then I'm going to do the instructions in Spanish. Primero voy a hacer las instrucciones en inglés y después voy a hacer las instrucciones en español. Hello friends! Uh, so today we're going to be doing a leaf rubbing activity, um, which means that we're going to be taking some leaves and making some cool designs with them. Uh, but if you don't have leaves, that is totally okay. Uh, we're going to explore texture today. And leaves and other things like coins have a very interesting texture. And texture, what that means is that it has a very, like, you can feel the bumps and the edges of things. It, it's just, like, very interesting to feel, for example, this leaf has like little bumps on it and I can feel the bumps with my finger. Uh, if you guys have ever held a coin, it has like little ridges around the edges and you can feel that with your fingers like this. And some of them even have like pictures on them. You can feel the pictures and see these pictures. So we're gonna be using objects like this. So. If you don't have leaves, you can use coins or maybe your table 
has an interesting feeling to it. I know this picnic table does. It, it's like kind of rocky and rough. Um, so our first step to doing a leaf rubbing is we're going to take our object. I'm going to take this leaf. Looks like a little hand. Uh, and I'm going to put it under my white piece of paper like this. So i got my paper and my leaf. I'm going to put it my paper on top of my leaf like this. And I'm going to hold it as flat as possible. And then I'm going to take my favorite color, which is green. I like the color green. Uh, and then I'm going to rub my crayon across my piece of paper. So you're going to rub it across where you placed your leaf. So my leaf is like somewhere in the middle here and I can show you that it's indeed there in the middle of my paper. So you're going to try to rub your crayon against your object like so. And at first you're not going to be able to see your uh, object, but the more you rub and sometimes even the harder you rub, you'll be able to see a print of your object. So I'm going to keep on rubbing my crayon across my paper where my object is. And then we have ourselves a leaf rubbing. So here's my leaf. You can see these little lines on them that I didn't notice before. I just noticed that my leaf looked like a little hand. It's like I have my own personal picture of my leaf. And that's how you do a leaf rubbing. Hola amigos, hoy vamos a hacer un frotaje de hoja. Eso significa hacer una, impres una impresión en el papel usando un crayón y una hoja. Si no tiene hoja, pues puede usar cosas que encuentre en su casa como monedas o algo que tenga una textura interesante. ¿Qué es una textura? Una textura es algo que se siente o se ve interesante. Por ejemplo, uh, esta hoja se me hizo interesante porque se parece como una mano. Tiene como una, dos, tres cuatro dedos, casi se ve como una mano. Ya cuando tenga su objeto, eh, puede ser una moneda, una hoja o algo que, que encontró interesante, vamos a hacer el frotaje de hoja. El primer paso es colocar su objeto. En mi caso voy a poner la moneda debajo de mi papel, así. Aquí está mi moneda, no se les vaya a olvidar. Aquí está, entonces, oh, lo voy a mover un poco, pero, uh, entonces lo voy a sentir, yo lo siento aquí, que está aquí la moneda, entonces voy a agarrar uh, un crayón de mi color favorito, en este caso a mí me gusta el verde, uh, y voy a empezar a rayar el papel sobre el, uh, sobre el objeto, y si la primera vez no se ve nada, puede uh, presionar o rayar más duro para que empiece a ver su objeto debajo del papel. Entonces aquí voy rayando sobre la moneda que puse debajo de mi papel. Y como ven, se ve el círculo, un círculo, casi como mi moneda. Uh, y casi se ve la cara de George Washington. Y así se hace un frotaje de hoja, en este caso un frotaje de moneda. So the next time you're in a park exploring and you happen upon a leaf you like, you can go ahead and collect it and make a leaf rubbing out of it so you can have a memory of this leaf when you go home. If you want to take this activity even further, there are many different art projects you can do. Uh, you can make a beautiful collage out of different leaves that you find and you can color them different colors. 
or you can create your own vines by cutting out your leaf rubbings and punching holes in them and stringing leaves across. Or you can make beautiful cards for your family, friends, and other loved ones by decorating the front of your card with a leaf rubbing and writing a beautiful note on the inside. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our leaf rubbing activity. Uh, we invite every single one of you to come visit us at the Eco Center in Heron's Head Park. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Bye! Welcome to Alamany Farm. Hi, I'm Mei Ling. I work with San Francisco Rec and Park and I help people grow food in gardens. A big hello to all of you that are taking part in the Dio de los Niños, Dio de los Libros virtual festival. If you've attended the festival in the past, you may have been to the free farm stand that provides free fruits and vegetables to our neighbors next to Parque Ninos Unidos. Many of those fruits and vegetables are grown right here at Alamany Farm. Farmers and their friends grow tons of veggies and fruits like apples, cucumbers, pimientos, bok choy, and much, much more. Here, the interns from Friends of Alamany Farm are planting baby lettuce. The farmers will help them grow by giving them water, pulling up weeds, and making sure they get lots of sunlight. We can grow food year-round in San Francisco, and there's always something to eat at Alamany Farm. All of these baby plants will grow into fruits and vegetables, which we will harvest and share. Can you guess what foods are growing here? These plants have yellow flowers that turn into green fruits. When the fruit is ready to eat, it turns red. These are tomatoes. What about this one? The flowers of this tree smell very sweet, though the fruit is very sour. This is a lemon. Some of the vegetables we eat are flowers. Can you guess what these flowers are? They kind of look like little trees. This is broccoli. Many of the vegetables we eat are the leaves of plants. Can you name some plant leaves that you like to eat? Bok choy, collard greens, lettuce, all of those plants are leaves. This one is kale. There's so much to see in a garden and so many different types of plants. Some are soft and some are sharp. Some are pointy and some are round. There are so many colors. What colors do you see? We make sure there's always flowers in bloom at Alamany Farm so that our pollinator friends, like butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds, can always have something to eat too. Next time you take a walk in your neighborhood, look for the different plant colors and shapes you see. If you want to read about growing the plants we eat, you can borrow these books from the library. Enjoy the festival and don't forget to eat your veggies! My first peekaboo animals. Come,还因为把我用中文同你的读,我第一个,不,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你
，系啦，冇错，蝴蝶。用一一只蝴蝶呢，我哋数下，一、二，有两只蝴蝶㗎喎、哦。呢只蝴蝶系咩色㗎？嗯，系啦，黄色。呢只蝴蝶系咪红色同埋粉红色㗎？系啦，冇错。好啦，我哋睇下。有咩动物喺度卜呢呢咯？哇！呢只动物呢，佢话佢有一个好长嘅鼻哥，跟住呢，有好大嘅耳朵。你嘅耳朵喺边度啊？我耳朵喺呢度。跟住呢，佢好鍾意喺啲草度散步㗎喎、哦。你估到佢系咩动物未啊？嚟睇下。哇！原来一个大笨象啊，你睇下一条好长嘅鼻哥，好长嘅鼻哥，系啦，大笨象咩颜色噶？嗯，灰色冇错。我嚟睇下，仲有咩动物喺度伏呢呢？呢只动物呢，佢呢有一个好长嘅尾巴，跟住呢，佢中意喺个树嗰度呢摇来摇去嘅。仲有佢有啡色嘅毛，仲有佢好中意喺啲树藤嗰度用佢脚勾住自己摇下摇下摇下咁样嘅。咁你估唔估到系咩动物啊？嗯，我嚟睇下。哦，原来系一只马骝啊！你睇下，佢有一个好长嘅尾巴，跟住呢，啡色嘅毛。系啦，我哋又可又可以学下佢摇下摇下咁样噶、哦，我哋勾住个藤，呢、这个当系藤，我哋用我哋嘅手指勾住佢摇下摇下摇下，同埋马骝整咩声噶？系咕咕嘎嘎，咕咕嘎嘎。<笑>好啦，我哋睇下仲有咩动物先。哇，呢只动物犀利啦！佢话呢，我一开声呢，我会好大声嘅，跟住呢，我有好靓嘅中毛，仲有呢，喺丛林嗰度呢，我四周围喎、哦，喎、哦。咁样呢，你估下系咩动物？睇下，你估得啱唔啱？哇，怪之得啦，原来一个狮子嚟㗎。我哋好似佢咁样嗌，哇！大声啲 r a 哇，好犀利啊！佢好啦，我哋个故事又完咗咯。My first peekaboo animals， 我第一个卜呢呢动物故事㗎喎、哦。好啦，如果你想查多啲我哋个资讯呢，请上我哋个网址 www.tandembayarea.org。好啦，再见。Hello, everybody.、Uh, my name is Kenan. I'm glad to be here at the San Francisco Library, and I'm here to share with you some instruments from West Africa. So、uh, the instruments we're dealing with come from the countries of Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, Mali,、uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and some other neighboring countries. So I'm going to start off with this instrument right here, which is called a kora. That's spelled K-O-R-A, and、uh, It is used by the the griots and the master storytellers of West Africa to、uh, tell stories, the oral tradition, genealogy, and so forth and so on. So basically, it's made out of a gourd, cow skin on it. Then you have wood. Then you have strings. It's a 22 string harp. Something like that. So again, we have the kora,、uh, West African harp, calabash harp, 
uh, used to tell the oral tradition in genealogy. So now we're about to move on to the next instrument called balafon, that's spelled B-A-L-A-F-O-N, and it's related to the marimba and all xylophones. Uh, this one comes from the same place that the kora comes from, and as you can see, it's made out of gourds, wood, and string, and hide to hold it together, and we play with mallets, okay? So I'm gonna play a traditional song from this culture of the Mandingo or the Mandinka people of West Africa, and it's called Mali Sajo. Okay, so now we're on to the next instrument, and the next instrument is called Kamale and Guni. Uh, so this instrument is very close to here, uh, to the tradition of America, because it's related to the banjo. So except that this is the harp, and the banjo is a lute, like a guitar. So that's the difference, but they both use gourds and skin. Just a little bit of something. That's what the Kamale and Guni sound like. Again, I played the Balafone, the Kamale and Guni, and the Kora from West Africa, the Mandinka people of West Africa. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day. It's really important that when we're reading to our children that we make sure that they're not only enjoying the story, but comprehending it. So that means that they understand everything that's going on. It means that they can guess what might be coming up next. It means that they understand all of the background knowledge involved in the story. It means that they understand all the words and what they mean and how they contribute to the story. And it also means that they have an emotional understanding of the character's mental states. So what they're thinking, what they might do next, how they're feeling, 
All of these things are a lot easier for us to do as adults. So it's really important that we guide our children so that way they can think about these things too. Some promising practices, which include verbal and nonverbal techniques, are short explanations and providing your child some context behind the story, as well as the nonverbal techniques, which consist of your voice and tone, gestures, facial expressions, and props that you can include when reading the story. Here we have an example from rabbits and raindrops. A rabbit's fur is not waterproof. Waterproof is when something is safe from getting ruined by water like rain boots instead of your sneakers. A rabbit's fur is kind of like your hair. Another really important technique is to use comprehension asides to better explain what characters might be thinking or feeling. So going off the script of whatever you're reading to give more context or a better explanation for your kids. And this is really important because it allows us to connect what's going on in the story with how the characters are feeling and why they're doing everything that they're doing. So for example, like in The Ugly Vegetable, one day I saw our garden growing. Little green stems that looked like grass had popped out from the ground. Do you remember what she and her mom just planted into the ground on the other page? Yeah, they put seeds in the ground, right? They're sprouting. That means that they're growing. That's so exciting. Here are some more fun activities that are easy to do at home, as well as de-stressing, to integrate into your daily routine. You can do them in the morning, um, afternoon, whenever you have some free time in your schedule. And if you're interested in any more activities like these, you can go on to jstart.org, that's J-S-T-A-R-T dot org, and check out all the other activities that we have for our at-home learners during this time. Que divertido! We hope that you enjoyed the music, the stories, the crafts, and the visits. Y colorín colorado, esta fiesta se ha acabado. But remember that you can go with your families and take along a book and visit the parks near you. And to keep the book joy going. Hemos terminado, pero no se olviden que aún pueden visitar los parques y pueden llevar un libro con ustedes y seguir la alegría de leer libros juntos en familia. See you next year at Parque Niños Unidos. Nos vemos el próximo año. Hey, Molly Sanchez.